Hey guys, I'm finally getting out of my illness. I know I've been banging on about it for the last week, but I just couldn't, I couldn't get my stuff together. As you can see, I've washed my hair. I didn't have enough energy to dry it, but at least I had the energy to wash it. There's always progress. Subscribe to the bell icon for engagement, and let's just get into today's topic. Which is kind of one that's a bit uncomfortable. Like, you know, you just talk about stuff and it just makes you uncomfy. That's me right now. It's because it's someone that I kind of know that I have to be critical of. And that's usually not where I like to be in life. And I think that's also another kind of disadvantage of starting to talk to people and make friends on the internet is sometimes you're gonna have to distance yourself from people or say things that are uncomfortable. Of course, there are people that I'm super close with that I just probably wouldn't ever do that for unless they literally like murdered a dog. But there are some people that you're just kind of like acquaintances with and that becomes uncomfortable because where do you draw the line, you know? As you can see, I'm kind of out of the shower um, with the wet hair. But what I noticed when I was going to put on my deodorant is that I ran out of my deodorant. So it's time to refill. And I'm actually going to use a different case. I have a few cases. So today's video is very kind of by Wild. And I'm going to show you guys the process. This is a new case they sent me. It's new for me. It's a mint shade and it's got my name engraved on it, which you guys can do too for an extra five pounds. And this is a new refill. This is how they come. Um, and this is Ocean Mist, uh, which is their new scent. Um, it's vegan friendly and aluminium free. And it smells oh, just like fresh ocean. You're on the beach, but you've got like fresh laundry on as well. For some reason, it's just such a fresh scent for me. So I switched to Wild because I like natural deodorants. Um, I get irritated by anything that is more harsh. Like there's just some ingredients that I don't mesh well with and that is in most deodorants. They dry out my skin, it becomes super flaky. This actually has shea butter in it as well on top of other amazing ingredients that just nourishes your armpits. It feels like I'm putting on like lotion instead of deodorant but then I don't get B.O., which is really nice. I've been using Wild for, oh, probably like a year, year and a half now, and I've started converting like friends, family, everyone. I've started converting people because I'm like, this is amazing. The deal with Wild is you buy this forever case and you keep this, like I said, forever. If you want, you can have more than one case, um, but that's obviously your personal choice. You can also get it engraved with your name on it or anything you want. And then you buy the refills. And like I showed you guys, you just refill when you're done, throw away this cardboard packaging, and that's it. That's all the rubbish that goes in the bin. Wild has over 11,000 five-star reviews on Trustpilot. People are loving it. I'm loving it. Everyone's loving it. So if you want 20% off your Wild order, you can use the code Angelica May or click the link in the description. You can grab yourself a case, some refills, anything you want. Um, this is going to be the one that I'm using for now, the mint one with the ocean mist scent. But I'm just always so excited to try new things with Wild. Um, whenever a new scent comes out, I'm just in love with it. Thank you to Wild for sponsoring today's video and let's get into whatever I'm talking about. Today we're talking about Illuminati who is actually called Blair, and that's like public knowledge. I'm not like doxing anyone, but I will refer to her as Illuminati and everyone by their kind of like YouTube aliases, um, just for ease of research for you guys and everyone involved. So Illuminati is someone that I've watched for a while and then I also ended up, you know, following on social media. They followed me back. We ended up talking in DMs. They were very supportive of me when I was going through a rough time and I tried to do the same this time and I'll get into all of that. So there is a bit of a connection there, but we haven't spoken in like two years. Yeah, that doesn't mean that, you know, I'm turning against them, but the stuff that's come out is very concerning and I just feel like this needs to be discussed because it makes me feel a bit uncomfortable because we have had personal conversations and I just want to kind of discuss that and be completely like honest with you guys you know that this is like weird stuff coming out I've actually watched her content as well and I continued to watch it after we became acquaintances and exchanged a few dms and when all of this went down I well right at the beginning when like things just started hitting the fan at the beginning I dm'd her and I just said like hope you're okay like mental health you know is important take a break if you need to like even though I did think that she had not exaggerated but it, she wasn't completely in the right I also think people are allowed to make mistakes and still you should be concerned about their mental health i don't think she like like i said murdered a dog like i felt like she deserved you know a break and someone a little bit of support so i just dm'd her and i said hey all things considered i hope you're doing okay mental health wise i know it's a bit tough but like you'll get through it then shit hit the fan it was kind of crazy yeah i felt really bad because at first i thought there was a bit of a pylon happening i feel like sometimes on the internet this is what people discuss when they talk about cancel culture and it's all related to that someone will make a small mistake which yeah they're in the wrong but like i said they haven't murdered a dog so it just feels a bit like the reaction is bigger than the initial like thing that's happened so if you guys don't know there's another channel called legal eagle who's a lawyer that discusses things on the internet to do with law but like makes it kind of interesting and fun and fresh he in that sense make commentary content there are many different forms of commentary content but it all kind of ends up bringing the same the editing is always very similar on different commentary channels like there's a vibe to it illuminati also makes commentary content slightly different though she's obviously not a lawyer so she doesn't make law related content but there can be some similarities when you make commentary content and sometimes that means editing style will also be kind of similar you can't you know coin i don't know a zoom in 
for comedic effect because a lot of people do that. Illuminati posted proof on Twitter saying that Legal Eagle is going out of his way to copy her style of like editing and the proof provided was already weak as it was but it was also kind of contradicting itself so she posted that one of legal eagles editors had reached out in her public discord and said hey guys is there any way to reach out to blair's editors illuminati's editors to ask how she does this special effect at the beginning of one of her videos which is where like there are a lot of 3d like switching clips and there's like a bit of bright light behind them that was an awful way to describe it but that's essentially what it was and he said do i reach out to illuminati do i reach out to her editors do i reach out here and they basically blew him off and then he did try to send a few emails this is actually for his personal channel he's an editor for legal eagle but he also has his own personal channel and he just wanted that style for like an intro for one of his videos he was also a big fan of illuminati and her content and he just wanted to make something in a similar style but not copying her by any means and also editing a lot of his plugins so he was essentially just asking is this a plugin that you guys bought or one that you guys created and can I get some answers? Because a lot of the time you can buy plugins to have in your editing software that just does like a highlighting feature or something feature. Like a lot of the times editors don't um, create these plugins, they'll buy them and they're publicly available to anyone. It's just about finding them. And if you find an editing community, you guys can just share plugins that you use. This isn't like a big conspiracy. This is just like people sharing tips and tricks you know it's like when youtubers become acquaintances and then share tips and tricks on the youtube algorithm or where to put ads or i don't know ctr or something audience retention time whatever it is like it's not a big old conspiracy but the proof that she posted was for that so he was talking about this like shiny little edit that she did for one of her clips but then what she actually ended up linking the two screenshots that she was saying hey guys look at this blatant copying was a ripped paper effect when you're writing down some text on screen and you have a ripped paper effect at the top of like the title and then writing and some highlighting that that was what then was she so like she had proof that one of legal eagles editors has been asking about this one specific plugin but then uses a ripped paper effect do you see how these two just don't go well together like one is improving the other this one is improving this one but also everyone uses this ripped paper height like i don't mean to call people unoriginal but a lot of editing is unoriginal and this was in fact one of those unoriginal bits of editing which is just like the ripped paper like whenever you're trying to teach people about something, a topic. Illuminati likes to teach people about different companies, corporations, uh, cults, MLMs, that kind of thing, which is a teaching type content. And then Legal Eagle makes teaching content about law. So of course you're both gonna end up having this weird like educational type editing style, which includes ripped paper and highlighting. It's not, you know, anything crazy. So that was a mistake on her part for, for thinking that her editing style is so original that anyone who does a similar thing is ultimately copying her and not just maybe copying someone else or coming up with it themselves because it's such an unoriginal idea, right? So she puts this out, people start roasting her and then it starts turning a bit personal a lot of her ex-friends start coming out and saying oh i'm so glad for her downfall this is my story with her this is my experience i'm so glad for people finally noticing how awful she is and i just personally didn't see the connection because i had never had a bad experience with illuminati behind the scenes so i just thought what is this weird pylon like yeah she falsely accused someone of copying her people that have big youtube channels tend to get a bit of an ego this is clearly like a humbling moment for her she'll learn from this and she'll become a better person i'm sure of it and i just didn't understand the pylon so that's why i dm'd her and i said hey like i'm I'm glad you acknowledge your thing hope you're doing better and like hope your mental health's okay because at the end of the day didn't think this was a cancelable offense i thought she just made a really stupid tweet you know i don't want to perpetrate that like cancel for any reason i'm trying to move away from that i'm trying to reserve that for really big issues so i just feel like that felt like a diluting of cancel culture like cancel someone over a weird tweet no and then and then the personal story started adding up and i started reading these threads about people that worked with her in the past she used to have a collab channel called sad milk and a lot of stuff came from that a lot of discord service stuff a lot of stuff with people feeling like she was manipulating them behind the scenes i'm not going to be going point by point summarizing everyone's hour-long video because i think that then takes away from their stories and i can't portray their stories as well as they could themselves so i'm gonna probably link the two main videos that i'm talking about in the description which are from two of her ex-friends and those are really the only ones i'm gonna be talking about today but there are a lot of tweet threads just being like you know it was awful to work with blair she's mean she shouts she demeans people she is manipulative she makes you codependent on her she'll get you stuff and then throw it back in your face she's demanding you know she just a lot of stuff that I was like, oh, mm, things are starting to come out. She posts an apology video and a tweet as well where she does put 
screenshot of the fact that she had DM'd Legal Eagle a few days after this whole thing went down and she had given him a private apology but then never publicly apologized. Finally, she tweeted that out and then put out an actual video and it was titled something like exposing Illuminati. It got a lot of views, but immediately the like to dislike ratio wasn't that great. And I think people just were seeing through some of the arguments that just weren't really sticking. She did focus on the plagiarism thing. So she accused Legal Eagle of copying her, but then people accused her of copying someone else's documentary, which then was debunked because she had put it in quotation marks on screen. And she did indicate in the video that she was just quoting that said documentary. She wasn't plagiarizing it, she was quoting it. And that was obvious in the video. So there was a lot of like back and forth happening, which was still why I was feeling like, whoa, where's this cancellation coming from? Because it just felt like people were just throwing things at the wall and trying to see what sticks. Some things did stick though. So some things did stick. She mentions Legal Eagle, apologizes for that. Then she goes straight into the plagiarism thing. She does a big old spiel about what, what is the legal definition of plagiarism. And you know, it was a very convoluted long video that didn't need all of that in it. She then mentions The Click, who is another YouTuber and had been speaking out against her. And she basically took the opportunity to try and accuse him of facilitating people in his Discord server that talked to minors. And she made it sound like he was completely okay with people doing that, which is a big accusation to make. When I was watching her apology video, I thought, oh God, like we're getting another one of those accusations of someone being awful. That's not fun and fresh. Spoiler alert, it wasn't like that. I'll get into that. And then there was another guy called Wonderstruck and he had actually worked for her. She made it sound like she gave him so many things and he just threw it back in her face. She gave him a job, she gave him a car that was very expensive. She put down the down payment and then it was in her name but he was paying the payments on it and when she got it back a few months later, it was like trashed and there was a, you know, she was making it sound like he just didn't care about anything that she gave him and how ungrateful he was and how he wasn't taking care of his dog and it was endangering her dog and there was just a lot happening there. Um, and that was because he put out a tweet thread saying that she's an awful person to work for and be friends with and she is just mean. She also addresses Sad Milk, which was a collab channel. She made it sound like she was the only one putting in work and the only one putting in any money towards this thing, which was then once again debunked. So that apology video right now isn't super well, I was gonna say two and super at the same time, super well received with a lot of dislikes and the comments are definitely shifting to like, hey, this is just a blatant manipulation of the story and the past. The Click first posts a video and he addressed Sad Milk. Um, he says that he had actually paid her back for a lot of the stuff and she had manipulated some screenshots to make it sound like she was the only one paying any effort and he had then left Sad Milk because he felt like it just wasn't going anywhere. And that's when she ended up getting a vendetta against him, which is something that a lot of people have in common when it comes to Illuminati. A lot of her ex-friends, when they talk about her, they talk about this like almost vendetta that she gets against them. She preys on their downfall, watches their social blades like a hawk every day and more insidious things that I'll get into. He talks about the minor related Discord story. So he has a Discord server with about 50,000 people in it. You can't moderate everyone. One of the people was posting inappropriate things to minors, there was something going on with that. It was 3 a.m. where he was, Illuminati lives in the States, he lives in Europe, so there was a bit of a time difference. She messages him and tells him, hey, this is going on. So she blindsides him before he has time to wake up the next day. She's already told everyone how he doesn't care that there is a pedo in his Discord and how he's facilitating this and making it sound like he's completely fine with there being pedophiles in his Discord server, which is obviously not the truth. He was asleep and his moderators had taken care of the whole thing before he'd even woken up and it was all addressed. They were all kicked out of the Discord server. Like everything was fine everything was actually handled perfectly in the way that you should handle things in these situations but she made it sound like he was completely uninterested in getting rid of these awful people from his discord server and that just wasn't the truth and then he jumps in post edit and says that more has come out and turns out that Illuminati is now pulling a creep show art. If you guys don't know, I filmed a video ages ago about creep show art. She hasn't been back on the internet since because it destroyed her career. She would be friends with a bunch of YouTubers and then go on Lolcow, which is basically kind of like a snark Reddit, kind of. You just discuss different YouTubers and what you like and don't like about them. And she would go on there anonymously and either self-promote, which is against the rules of Lolcow, um, or she would trash or make up false allegations against people that she was friends with. And those people have now spoken out and said that it was like awful to find out because she was so nice to them. And they had actually gotten really close in that time. Um, she would also use slurs, even though on her channel, she was super against people using slurs. So that was a whole thing. And she had, and Illuminati 
has been doing the same thing to probably a few people uh, but Kalik is you know the one talking about his situation so I wonder if this has happened to other people and they're going to speak out about it um, she would invent accounts and she would write little like snarky things on Reddit about the Kalik making it look like he was this you know racist or something like she would make up these things and talk as if she's not Illuminati and be like oh well Illuminati must have distanced herself from him because of this video that he filmed in 2005 and just spreading misinformation or talking about this pedo story as if it was different to what it was and that must have been awful to see she was also caught in discord paying people to sift through her ex-friends content to look for problematic things to cancel them for just because they weren't friends anymore like these people didn't wrong her like for example the click just left sandmark he left a collab channel that he didn't want to be a part of anymore that's it that's what got him to a place where she was creating anonymous accounts like burner accounts to try and cancel him or paying people to try and look for information to cancel him. That is really odd behavior. That is strange and obsessive behavior. And that's why I felt like now I had to make this video. Not like she did anything to me, but like me and her talked in the past and that feels weird. Like that feels weird. Cause what if I had done something that maybe she felt like I had wronged her in some way? You know what I mean? Like you start thinking about things and you start thinking like, oh my, like should I just stop talking to people on the internet? Because like as long as, if I don't know you in person, then what? No, but I don't want to be like that. I don't want to restrict myself. I have so many great friends that I've never met and I just talk to you online and I don't want to have that mindset but it's weird you know it's definitely strange so he did that Wanda Shrek then did his video and he addressed a lot of the accusations that she made in her vi apology video she had actually brought his mental health into it without his consent which I thought was a very low blow she talks about a suicide attempt that he had and his depression and his mental health which I thought wasn't for her to address it was for him and he had discussed that and he discussed how he wasn't comfortable with that coming out but it, it, the cat's out the bag he has to address it now he talked about the car which he didn't want that car he doesn't like fancy things she really pushed for him having this car because she said you know i can afford it so you take it and then she held it over his head anytime he you know had anything to say and i think the common denominator here with Blair is having almost control over her friends and if that control isn't there she tries to force it aka by employing you or starting a collab channel with you or buying you something expensive to hold over your head and that is not the basis of a good relationship friendship or partnership he does talk about the friendship and how it fell apart and then you know the work relationship also fell apart he actually lived with Blair he took some pictures of the conditions of the house that she lives in and it's kind of unrelated but it's disgusting he also discussed the dog situation she made it sound like he wasn't taking care of his dog and his dog was then endangering her dog but in reality her house was a complete mess her dog was kind of aggressive towards his dog and it led to some uncomfortable situations where he had to separate the dogs or whatever and then just addresses like any lies in her apology video my voice is really going this is embarrassing and any other lies i just recommend you guys watch her apology video do give her the view and at this point um it's not really doing any good for her. Watch her video and then watch um, the Clicks video and Wonderstruck's video. I feel like from their mouths, it, the, the story is more interesting. I'm just here to summarize the main bits. Um, and then her social blade. Uh, I haven't talked about people's social blades in a long time. That used to be my whole thing. She has lost about 120,000 subscribers in the last week. And I haven't seen this kind of repercussions since Creepshow Art. I really feel like that was the last time I saw something this crazy happening. 140,000 subscribers lost since the 21st of April until now. That is ridiculous. She obviously is a massive channel. She'll bounce back from this. But I feel like her videos are getting less views. I don't know if I made that up in my head or if that actually happens. I'm still subscribed to her. I just never end up unsubscribing. I've not watched her content because I feel really icky about it right now. But yes, so right before this drama went down, about three to four weeks ago, she was getting two to three hundred thousand views, sometimes even up to four hundred thousand views. If the, like, let's say her standard is two to three hundred thousand views, but if a video did well, it would get between like three and four hundred thousand views, and then so on and so forth. Even some above four hundred thousand views, like the work joke, what the writer's really doing, yada yada, like some of them would get a lot of views. And then a day ago, she posted Panera, eighty-two thousand views, then eighty-nine thousand views, one hundred and twelve, one hundred and fifty, one hundred and twenty-five, like. It's still a lot of views, but they've definitely halved since the drama went down. And I do wonder if she's gonna ride the wave, not speak out ever again. Like the apology she made, that's all she's gonna say. She's never gonna address it again and just ride the wave until her views come back to normal. Or if she, another option, doesn't address it, but her views just plateau, stay about kind of where they are now, 100 to 200,000 views. Or if they'll slowly start dipping because of the algorithm, the way it works if they'll just kind of slowly decline or if she's ever gonna gain the subscribers back. I don't know, I'm really intrigued to see where this goes because I made the wild statement the other day and I still kind of stand by it that faceless channels don't get canceled quite as much as face channels.
channels like if you can see someone's face you're more likely to cancel them because there's a weird attachment there where you kind of expect more of them because they feel more human but when a faceless channel does get cancelled the rare occasion the cancellation is like no other like it's crazy it feels like a whole unveiling you know and this is really one of those it's her and creepshow art that i'm like wow like you didn't think they were gonna get cancelled and when they did it just all crumbled all fell apart and i just want to know what you guys think about all of this let me know before my voice dies subscribe to the like comment for engagement and i'll see you in my next one bye guys Thank you.